Hey, welcome back. And now we're on video 10 of this series and we're exploring how to use Apache Spark within Microsoft Fabric. And today we're going to be focusing on handling missing values within our data frames. And you might be wondering, why do we want to handle missing values? Null values and NAs are just part of a data frame, right? Well, within Microsoft Fabric, we want to be using our data frames for data science and machine learning. And a core part of machine learning and preparing our data sets for machine learning is generally to do something with missing values because most machine learning models don't really like missing values. They can't handle that. It needs to know, it needs to have something in there to learn from, right? So a common step in data preparation for machine learning is to remove or handle in some way missing values. And today we're gonna to be looking at the different ways that we do that within PySpark in Fabric. So I've got a new data set for this lesson. It's called Property Sales Missing. As always, it's available in the GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can follow along. And all you have to do is upload this into your files area of a lake house and we can read it from there. So let's dive straight into this. So first on the why, well, I've already mentioned the why, it's dealing with missing values. It's a common task in preparation for machine learning. And there's a few different ways we can do this. And which method you choose depends on generally the business question that you're answering for your data science project and what makes sense for your domain or your data set. Because sometimes you might want to completely remove a row if the the value in one of the columns is, is null because maybe it's like a really important thing or maybe it's your label. You know, if you don't have any data to learn from, then might as well remove it. But there are other ways of dealing with missing values as well that we're gonna be looking at. Okay, so let's grab this data and we're just gonna read it, the CSV into a data frame and then print the results or show the results into our notebook. And here we go. So if you've been following along, this data set you're probably absolutely sick of by now, but I'm gonna keep on using it. And it's got sales data for houses or property. And we've got the sale price in US dollars, who sold it, the agent, the city, the type of like house or apartment that it was, was sold and the address. And we can see that unfortunately, some of our agents have failed to update the database with the sales amounts for some of these sales. So we can see that we've got null values for some of the values in this column, which is unfortunate, but that's what we're going to be dealing with today in a variety of different ways. Okay, the first method is to just drop the rows that have null values. And this is pretty drastic, but you might be wanting to do this, kind of taking a bit of a sledgehammer to your data. So you can see here, we've got a lot of null values. So what this function is doing is if we've got any null values in any of the columns, remove the row entirely. I don't want to see it, right? So this is what this looks like. We've actually only got, only got two rows that have data in each of the five columns. So that's what that looks like. But we can also pass in, if we want to get a bit more surgical with how we do this, we can pass in this how. And if we hover over drop, we can get a bit of, bit of insight into how this drop works and there's three different parameters that we can pass into the drop function there's how so how do you want to drop well we can have any so drop a row if it contains any nulls or drop a row if all its values are null so if we just print these you can begin to guess what this is going to look with the any it's the default so it's going to be exactly the same as what we had here if we've got how equals all then we need all of the values in that row to be null for it to be dropped and in our data set we don't have any rows like this so it's going to be the same as what the input was but it's something to bear in mind now the other one to mention if we hover over this again just to look at the documentation we've got threshold so okay maybe we don't want a binary drop everything if there's a null value. What if we want some sort of threshold? So here, what we're gonna do is start with a threshold of five and see what this looks like. Okay, so with a threshold of five, basically that's what we were looking at before. So 
the threshold is saying there must be values in this threshold number of columns. Now the threshold is five. So we're saying, and we've only got five columns. So what this is saying is return me rows where we have data in five columns which is all of them in our case. So again, we get just these two rows that's completely full. But what happens when we drop this threshold, we start to get slightly different results. So now we're looking for rows which have four out of the five columns. You know, we have values in four out of the five columns. So this one is missing just one value. It's this one. And these ones are missing the address. So that meets the threshold. We've got four columns with values for this data. And if we drop that down again, make the threshold three, we're saying we want values in three of the columns. So it adds in this row has just been added now. So we're pulling through this one and this one where there's two nulls. So we've got, it meets the threshold of three. And I don't think there's anything below that in our threshold, but that's how the threshold parameter works. What we can also do is specify Perhaps some columns are more important than others, okay? So the other parameter that we can pass into this drop function is subset. So drop the rows where this column, our sales price, is null. This is what this is gonna look like. Okay, so now we've got a completely clean sale price column. We've still got nulls in the address column because that wasn't part of our subset. We're not interested in the nulls in that column. We only care about the nulls in the sales price column. And now we've removed them. That's removing null values and that's how that works. And obviously with the subset, you can also pass in a list. So if I also give it address, oh, that's not a list. So now it will remove all of those things because our subset has been expanded to include the address as well. So that's just how that works. Okay, so that's removing rows where we have null values. Let's look at filling because another method in data science is to fill some of these missing values. Maybe we don't want to remove that whole row completely, but we might want to fill it with a value that makes sense for the analysis that we're carrying out. So two different methods here. Again, we're calling df.na.fill this time. And we're gonna pass in two parameters, the value. So this is what we're gonna fill in the empty value with, and our subset again. So we're saying, okay, I only care about the address column. And if there's any null values, I want you to replace the value, or I want you to fill in the value as unknown address. And so there's two different kind of syntax ways of doing this. Either you can call df.na.fill or df.fillna. It's potato, potato, as they say. And so now we can see that we've got unknown address, unknown address, unknown address, unknown address for all of the null values in that column. But because we called the subset, none of our sales price is obviously changed or updated. So that's how we do that, we can also do it for numbers. So in our sales price column, we can kind of impute the value zero for all null values. So this might not make sense, but I'm just showing you the functionality. We've replaced all the null values with zero. And again, if I was to add in the address into the subset, what would you expect to happen here? Well, actually nothing happens because what happens is it looks at the, the data type of your value, which is zero, so it's a number. And Spark knows that the address column is of type string. So if you add in a column in your subset that is different to the data type in your value, then it's just gonna be ignored, okay, from this fill operation. So that's one thing to bear in mind. So you might be thinking, okay, filling this column with zero is a bit, you know, that's not very representational. That's not a very good idea. And you'd probably be right. If you fed this into a machine learning algorithm, you know, that those zeros are gonna seriously affect the predictions. And I doubt that you can get an apartment in Atlanta for zero dollars. So one method that is used just to show you the functionality, I'm not saying this is what you should do, but 
We can use feature engineering part of Spark. This is the first time we're looking into the, the more machine learning type libraries. And we can use this imputer. So imputation is a whole field in itself, like the right strategy for imputation of missing values. But what it means is we're gonna look at all of our existing data, look for the, the patterns. And in this case, we're looking at, at the mean of the existing values. And we're gonna impute, so we're gonna replace the missing values with the mean for that column. So the way that we have to do this is, well, we need to import our imputer and we're gonna give it the input column, which is this column, right? Sales price, and that's our first parameter. And we're also gonna give it an output column. So we can do this on multiple columns, which is why we're passing in a list. In our case, we're only doing it for one. The output column needs to be a different name. So we're gonna sales price imputed and the strategy is mean. So obviously, depending on your strategy that you want to use for imputation, you can change this and you can look in the documentation. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna check out imputation in a bit more detail in Spark. So what we're gonna do is call the fit method on this imputer object. So it's gonna fit, it's gonna have a look at our data in our input column. It's gonna fit a model in our case, the model is very basic because it's just the mean, but you can do more elaborate imputation methods. You know, you could fit a model on a, reg on a regression curve and use that as your imputed value. So then we're gonna, so we've fit our model, we've transformed our data set and we're gonna show the results. So let's click that. Okay, so now we've added on this column. So all the existing data is the same, but for this null value, what's happened is it's imputed a 445360, which I assume is the mean. And for this null value, it's done the same. So that's gonna be our, the mean of our column of the, of the input rows. And it's just replaced all of our missing values with this mean value. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. The code and everything is on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. If you're not subscribed already, then you should be because we're going right from the start to finish, exploring how to use Spark in Fabric. And we've got lots more videos coming up. So if you're finding these useful, make sure that you give this video a like, leave a comment if you have any questions and share this with any colleagues or friends that you think might find this useful. Thanks very much. And I'll see you for the next one tomorrow.